What's up guys, Lifting here. It is that time once again in just one day Synthesis League starts and we will all be throwing our real life responsibilities in the trash bin and begin our downward spiral of self-destruction. It's going to be great. In this video, I'm bringing you five solid League starters to get inspired by. And before we start, a big thanks to you guys over at Patreon. You make a big difference. Thank you very much, everyone. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And then let's get into it. The first build I want to present is an Incinerate Elementalist by Torstein the Fallen. Incinerate is a channeling skill that goes through eight stages. The longer you channel it, the bigger it grows. When you stop channeling, you release a wave of fire in a destructive, girthy area, igniting everything in its path and dealing up to 500% more damage. This build is played as the Elementalist Ascendancy. This will help you build your direct damage increase your area of effect and provide additional herald utility. In synthesis, incinerate received a buff and like many other spells, it is now cheaper to sustain, but its area of effect and high level damage also received a notable buff. Torstein's belt can do any constant in the game, check it out. The second belt on the list is a Herald of Agony Max Block Gladiator by Terrain. So first of all, the main damage source from this belt comes from the Agony Crawler minion, which is summoned via the Herald of Agony skill. This nasty little fellow has three different ways of attacking. The first is a melee attack that it rarely uses, the second is a multiple projectile attack, and the third is an explosive barrage of projectiles. And it can deliver tons of damage. Terrain best describes the Agony Crawler as his personal artillery cannon. The beauty of the Agony Crawler is that just by its own, without any real scaling, it deals a ton of damage. This means that Terrain's setup gets a lot of freedom to invest those points that you ordinarily would have had to invest into damage nodes and it is in due part to that which allows him to scale his blockchain so effectively. This is of course only emphasized by his pick of the Gladiator Ascendancy which further helps to provide amazing block scaling and utility for his setup. And it's worth uh, knowing however that the Herald of Agony leveling can be a bit slow early on however as you progress the skill it scales very efficiently into late game. Coming up third on the list is a Tri-Element Trapper by Mr. Moho, a build I featured in the past but due to some powerful buffs to Shock Nova and Ice Trap I thought it was worth a revisit. This setup cycles primarily through three different trap skills, namely Fire Trap, Ice Trap and Shock Nova Trap. Fire Trap and Ice Trap are regular trap skills of course, but in order to use Shock Nova as a trap skill it needs to be linked with the trap support gem. This now allows you to cast it as a trap and just as importantly to scale it via trap modifiers too. Fire Trap is used as your main single target damage dealing source. Ice Trap is used for pack clearing and Shock Nova Trap is used for pretty much anything as it serves two goals, dealing damage of course, but also shocking enemies making them take further damage from other damage sources too, like your two other trap skills for instance. As the Saboteur Ascendancy, you unlock powerful damage bonuses to your traps, but also amazing defensive utilities such as being able to blind nearby enemies and having high amounts of life regeneration, etc. This build is not for the lazy type of player though. It requires you to shovel through various skills to make the best of it, but if you do, you also end up with a pretty solid and interesting build. The fourth build on the list is a Stormbrained Inquisitor by Theon. And now I know what you're all thinking. Stormbrained wasn't that just nerfed, and yes it was, 10 points to Gryffindor, but it's important to remember that nerfing something does not necessarily make it useless. Stormbrained damage was nerfed roughly by 25% overall, but to prove it's still solid, Theon took out his Hyperthermia support gem on his 3.5 character, which according to him for his setup amounts to around 40% something more damage. He then proceeded to kill Uber Elder on his 5 link and did it rather convincingly. So to reiterate for the Hufflepuffs out there, Stormbrained is still perfectly viable and a solid skill for a League starter. Dean's build is played as the Inquisitor. This allows him to effectively scale critical strike chains and critical damage while also receiving generous buffs to both attack and cast speed. But most importantly, the Inquisitor's inevitable judgment allows critical strikes to ignore enemy elemental resistances and thus deal the intended full amount of damage this is especially powerful against bosses who typically have high inherent resistances. As long as the critical strike chance is high enough to reliably deliver crits, this is a very powerful ascendancy when properly utilized. I featured other belts of Thien's before and for good reason. 
He takes time to probably test his belts and makes an effort to provide a solid guide for people wanting to try them out for themselves. Give it a visit. The fifth and final build on the list is a Spark Inquisitor by Bashtard. Another build I've featured in the past but which was also just buffed in the recent patch and now deserves a revisit. Spark is a lightning projectile spell. When you cast this spell you spawn unpredictable sparks to move around in the near area until they expire. With enough cast speed you can efficiently cover a massive area with tons of small spark projectiles moving around providing excellent clear potential. If hitting environment or terrain the spark projectiles will bounce off and move in another direction. And normally a spark projectile will get consumed or expire once it hits an enemy. However, if you add a way of piercing with the projectiles, these are after a short duration able to hit the same target again, potentially giving a far higher amount of damage per cast than regularly. Before 3.6, a spark projectile cast could hit the same enemy again one second after the initial hit. This has been reduced to 0.66 seconds, now meaning the projectile can hit the same target more frequently. Besides this, Spark also received a notable damage buff at high levels. Bashtard spelled like Thines is played as the Inquisitor for pretty much the same reasons too, like ignoring enemy elemental resistances, attacking cast speed and higher critical strike chains and damage of course. While Bashtard spelled has several expensive items showcased, these are merely suggestions for late game rather than requirements. As you play the build, you will generate currency, or I hope so at least, and eventually you'll be able to afford the items listed. Oh, and what would a lifting build showcase leak starter video be without a bonus build? And this bonus is a Scorching Ray Totem Hierophant by Milky Slice. And it is a beast for the budget it demands, an excellent leak starter. Scorching Ray is a channeled spell that applies a stacking debuff on enemies, which deals fire damage over time. Once it reaches the maximum amount of debuffs on the target, it further weakens the enemy by applying the fire exposure debuff, which reduces the target's fire resistance by 25, further increasing its damage. The more cast speed you have, the faster it reaches full potential. Normally, Scorching Ray is a regular spell you cast from your character, but if paired with the spell totem support gem, it becomes available to use as a regular totem, also enabling totem modifiers to scale the damage of the spell. To fully utilize this fact, Milky chose the Hierophant Ascendancy for this setup. The Hierophant will allow you to spawn an additional totem while also providing solid buffs to both totem damage and granting mind over matter an extra 10% damage mitigation. If you are new and this sounds complicated, don't worry, Milky have you covered in his guide. Alright guys, I actually have one more build I want to show you today. Another bonus build. It is a mass minion necromancer by Hersanic. And I can't believe I haven't noticed this build before. It's incredibly well written and designed and I'm excited to show it to you guys. Uh, I'm going to quote a part from her Sonic's guide. Listen. This summoner build freezes, poisons, bleeds, blinds, maims, hinders, taunts, generates frenzy charges for allies, curses, lowers, resists, gains life on hit from attacks and spells, knocks back and teleports all as one action. And it is assisted by two Frost Sentinels, a Solar Guard, an Agony Crawler, 11 Phantasms, 8 Zombies, a Holy Relic, 10 Skeletons and 40 Vault Skeletons. The goal of this build are to field as many minions with as many supports as possible, push summoner DPS to new heights while remaining tanky, be adaptable and play fast, smoothly and with minimal fuss. Yeah. So this means the skill gems used for this build the minion ones at least are Race Spectre, Summon Phantasm on Kill, Herald of Agony, Race Zombie, Vol Summon Skeletons, and Summon Holy Relic. I mean, I've played a lot of summoners before and I always end up feeling socket starved, but uh, this here takes it to a whole different level. There are too many mechanics involved in this build for me to start explaining it here, so I'll leave you to check out the build guide for yourself, but needless to say, it is a solid starter and works for any constant in the game. And so with that said, we made it through all the belts I wanted to present. I hope you are feeling inspired and excited to try on Synthesis League. Once we get further into the league, I will be releasing more of these belt showcase videos and feature some of the new and reworked skills we now have available. So if that has your interest, don't forget to subscribe and leave on your notifications. If you're still feeling lost and still don't know what to play or just seek advice regarding Path of Exile, then visit us on Discord gg slash lifting we have a whole section dedicated to helping players such as yourself once again a big thanks to my guys over at patreon i appreciate you guys best of luck in synthesis league everyone thank you for watching and bros do you even nerd <laughs>